On this Tobacco University video, I'm going to go over sectioning a site for cannabis production and how we might want to allocate different areas within a large field and how small or what parameters would be used for making different ideas or sections within a large field. Just as we see the different sections of pizza, let's go into sectioning a site for cannabis production. So first off, during the evaluation process is when you should kind of have an idea of where you might want to have different sections. So when evaluating a potential growth site, there may be different uh, differences noticed in one or many parts of the process. Growers should section out these into subsections to provide specific analysis of these areas differently than the rest. Now again, how small you make these or what differences do you notice? Well, here we're seeing these dark green patches, we're seeing these much yellow margins and in these brown areas as well. Now it could be very difficult to individually monitor each individual little area. Uh, so we're looking at where the general trends are. We see this area here for the most part fairly consistent and we see areas over here a little less consistent as well as over in this region. So when in doubt, uh, if there's two sections in particular that you're going through and evaluating that appear to be different, uh, at the very least growers are advised to take separate soil samples uh, for each. And can you identify any of these issues within your field? As we see here, this kind of yellowing uh, banding that's occurring. Sometimes this can be explained by visual differences and other times it confirms that the soil is the same and that there's another reason for the differences noticed. So. When we're comparing two sections, well, it might be good to take a soil test from here and here. And if the results come back the same, it might be a water issue. It could be something else that's going on. Could be a different kind of soil vein that runs through here. But it's good to know, especially when you're evaluating a new site. So at the very least, what should growers be doing? Uh, grower should, sections should be defined as separate fields, even if in very close proximity. If separate soil tests show similar conditions, uh, then a grower can know that to treat these two fields in a similar manner. So here, if we see these little driving lanes here and we see these different blocks, it would be advised at least initially to sample these differently. Now, if these come back the same, well, now we know in the future to manage those very similarly. However, we're seeing an elevation change, and while they may look very similar, there's the potential for, for great differences. And that $20 soil test uh, can really save a lot of money in the long run. So how small of an area should we section? You know, can go through and how fine do we detail something or how broad do we detail something? And really it comes down to the grower's discretion. However, when first evaluating an area, these sections should be as small as reasonable to manage. In the great scheme of things, soil tests are cheap and in comparison, you probably don't have to go through this small little detail level, uh, but taking a couple more soil tests and getting them analyzed just to confirm uh, something would be a great um, point of advisement. However, um, if they do come back the same, it does not mean you have to keep sampling that many times, but a good initially to get that kind of idea together, especially if it's a new area. Now, how do we develop these subsections? Well, if the field is large, it can be broken into subsections. The boundary of subsections is often based on past practices. For example, as we see here, compost in a cover crop versus compost only. Even though this might be the same field, it'd be good to soil sample these separately. Some fields also have multiple uh, crops on them uh, that are rotated, so that can also be utilized as different subsections to be sampling. The areas of rotation that have occurred in the past may be within the same field, so subsectioning would be used to demark these areas. And again, it gives the growers a little bit more information. Now, as the grower, it's important for to go through the process of label and documentation. So getting a printout of the area is important uh, to get before you go into an area. This will help you orient yourself and also mark where you're taking soil samples and what you're going to call each sample. When naming, try to select names that do not change. For example, north middle, if we're talking if we're in the northern area and then the middle section of that particular field. If you're labeling something called like cornfield, this is not a great name because it might be rotated and have peppers grown the next year and then you might rotate back into hemp and then go into corn. So just keep in mind, you want to usually stay away from crop names. If a farmer is currently using an area, you may want to also make note of what they call the field. So if you have any questions, you can use their terminology. For example, if you, you may name it North Middle, but if for whatever reason the farmer always calls it Grandma's Field uh, by the current landowner, that 
that might be what you might want to call it simply because that current landowner might know, oh yeah, on Grandma's Field X, Y, or Z. It can really just help you learn it in the sense that you can utilize some more of that history. Or if you're calling it by a different name, you might lose some of that background or history that the previous landowner or someone you're leasing the land from might have. So again, just some suggestions there. Uh, hopefully you find these helpful.